Okay, welcome to Six Scale. I'm gonna share my screen. All right, here's the notes in the chat. Um, have yourself an as, as an attendee, please. I think it's just you, Marcelo. Okay. Um, where we the the only two things I had for today was the um, review the performance of the CI job results, which is um, because of a um, I did the patch to give us some more time and it merged this morning. I just don't know if it got there in time for the run. I checked the, the last see. one, yeah. When did this merge? Five hours ago. Three fifty-seven a.m. And then when did this run? Two forty. Oh, we missed it by like an hour. Okay, so it's not in here for this test. Okay, so I mean, this this is gonna look the same then as we were seeing before. Yeah, okay, yeah, same stuff, okay. Okay, so nothing there yet then. I think um, I think what I'll do is, uh, because I, I really wanna get this like, at least a little bit closer to- um, 100, yeah. Yeah, I wanna get, like, I wanna see uh, if I, if, after the um, we get some more data, I might just post in the mailing list. I'm picking you guys in Slack, and we can discuss this because it's. Um, I really want to see if because if this doesn't change um, after we want to strategize again, because um, maybe we need to look deeper at this and just to make sure we're. Because I agree, we you know with last time what Dave was saying is like, like your test it literally waits for all of the VMs to be running before it continues. So. They should be there. Um, it's just odd that we're missing um, the uh, some of the crates requests. So what I all I did was for this change is I added a sleep buffer before in between the um, start and the perf test, and then I increased the time afterwards. So now we're we have a thirty seconds buffer in the front and sixty at the end. So we're gonna at least measure ninety seconds. Mm -hmm. So that'll give us uh, hopefully a different look. So we'll just see. I, I guess I, I'll know, and I guess we'll the next one runs in what time? Ten forty-one. So in about an hour and a half, it, the next one runs. So <clears throat> I can check it then, and we can see we'll have you know what when, what ends up happening. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. The second thing, um, the load generator. So I've been looking at this. Um, I've been doing actually some work on. So here's some of the different um, goals we had originally for this. And um, so you actually did. You actually did this. This is. This was um, part of your test here. But the um, the I, I was interested in some actually different um, types of tests. I actually what I've been working on. Let me add it. So. Mm -hmm. Maintain it's it's so what I did was um, I don't I called it a churn test um, that's what I called it so um, this is like um, so like uh, so like fill uh, so let's see what creates a large number of VMs VMIs um, and then. Uh, Delete and recreate VMs minimize at a configurable rate. Okay, so like the point of this is like I want to yeah. um I so want to simulate churn. Yeah, I, actually, uh, uh, I call this uh, steady state test. So, steady state. Okay. Yeah, because. It, you're going to you know um check a steady state scenario isn't it so 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, so the, like what I had in mind is like, if you are a, um, like for instance, if you're, if you're AWS, like you are constantly looking for, you want to maximize the number of VMs that you have. And so you expect, right. That people will start and stop workloads all the time. And you also expect that your usage is high. So in other words, like you expect your data center to be at all times nearly full and you expect lots of crates and deletes to happen on demand. So that's basically what I wanted to imitate is like kind of that idea that like, you know, what, what happens when we see this and, and, and particularly like the rates, like how is, you know, like we should, we expect to be able to reach a large number to like how high can we go, you know, does that affect us? And then the rates, like how does that affect us and given the, the size and, and you know, the, how strong the rates are. So that's kind of what I was interested in. So I was, yeah. I was actually doing some, some work on that. It totally makes sense. So actually, I was uh, writing a, a small document regarding that. So I just put here, man. If you, maybe you can open this. Sure. It's a work in progress, okay? So it's not that. Oh, let me share this. Let me open this. So, yeah, I don't so, know. Thanks. So since it's still work in progress, so yeah, can you try again? Okay, there you go. Okay, so basically is to describe, you know, these two kind of tests with the shock and burst load with what we are doing. So it, this is very aligned with what Kubernetes defined, okay? So it's, uh, and also, you know, some uh, research papers are doing like some scalability analysis. It's, it's the steady state load generator and the shock burst that we have right now. So, and they both, uh, you know, have two different goals. So for example, the steady state is, is to test normal operations. So you have this constant load that is the churn definition that you have, okay. uh, that you wrote before. And the shock test is actually what we are doing is to stress uh, very intensively and see, well, shock and burst same. So. I see. Okay, so hold on. sorry, I'm, 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 I wanted to, so I wanted to pin these together. So like this is, this test is like, it's, it's a combination of sort of these two, this, uh, this, 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 two one first. this one first one and last one, right? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Sudden increase and then wait, generate high, is that? No, no, wait, wait, it would be like, I, the last two actually. So it would be this one. So generate a high number of VMIs and then sudden increase and, and or decrease in VM count, in VM accounts, something like that, maybe. Okay, sorry, so I just wanted to, to- What's the to difference? Yeah, just, if you can come back, I think it oh, would sure. be nice to discuss that. So okay. what's the difference of soak and burst? Um, soak and burst, so- Because I think these are the same thing, so that's why I'm asking. Okay, so let's see. So in the stress, I think is the stat, the churn is that state also. So I, so I I'm have, saying is, I, have... I think I it right. has just two classifications and the other things are inside. You know, just just I don't know, but we can discuss that. <laughs> well, let me let me let me mess, let me change. Okay, so I think so. Let me try to find density first because maybe these are not the same. Density is like you want to load um, the you want high VM or VMI counts on a single node, a small number of nodes, right? It can be across many nodes. It can be across. Yeah. So then, so density is is just like filling a data center, is what you'd say. The other is similar, isn't it? So what, what? What? Yeah. So the point is the burst and the steady state is the burst you. For example, you create 1,000 VMs, 10,000 VMs, and then you leave it and see what happened, okay? So the steady state, it's what you were saying. So you have the ramp up. So you create 
the number of VMs, and then you delete, and then you recreate, and then you try to keep the churn. So the the a constant creation and deletion in the system. So you have like the maximum uh, number of objects that you want to create, and then you you keep like you know you do some math and then you keep okay so i want to keep this maximum number of objects with this rate of deletion and you keep creating things and then you need to so the system enter in a steady state okay so it will be like a, i don't know 20 v, 20 vms creation per i don't know per minute it's very high this but let's see what we can do let's just say and then you keep that and see how the system behaves, you know, in this constant, you know, churn that you were saying. So in the, this constant load behavior. So in the burst, the what I call shock test also, it's um, it's it's just things. So you you it's one thousand or ten thousand, and then you don't create that. So you just leave, see how the system behavior, and then you delete that in the end. So both are density because you are putting a lot of node, you know, VMs on the node. It's but the, the way that you create that is the burst and the steady state. You know. So what what, what I'm I want to break so the yeah. So okay, density. So to me, like uh would be uh high VM or VMI accounts. Is that accurate? Just is that's the only that's the thing that's unique to density. It's just we have high counts of VMs. Like we've we've maxed it out in some form. But is that accurate? Like is, do we care about how fast as possible? Does that even is that relevant or is that would we call that something else? No, this is able to be say like the SLO, so the service level agreement, how fast it can create. So yeah, let's let's put like that. So there is two two ways to create generate load. So before before define the test. So is the 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 shock test or the burst that we were saying, and the steady state load generation, and then inside you know just two kind of ways to generate load. We can control the density of the VMs that is being created in this and the population of objects in the node. So okay, so we have some yeah. two performance things. So we have slow ramp up and then we have um, one shock test, like say create yes. 1000, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, okay. So we called it. So you called it shock. I think shock or spike test. I don't whatever. Yeah. Uh, so what do you right. prefer? So shock spike. I don't know. <laughs> I think I googled the term spike test. That's how I think I got it. So like spike uh -huh. test is like fast ramp up, uh, fast ramp up, and then we have steady state. We'll call our slow ramp up. Okay. Yeah. So what? I don't, I don't know if it is slow and fast here because no. a steady state can also be a fast ramp up, isn't it? So it depends how you configure the test. So the steady state is you keep, you know, the cycle in the test and the, and the, what I call in the burst. So, so Kubernetes using steady state and burst. So we, maybe we mm -hmm. can keep those terms, this too. So the burst, you just generate, you know, a huge request. And the steady state, you keep cycling the creation, update, and deletion. So I think, especially because Kubernetes used that, I think we should stick with the burst and steady state. And okay. then, and then, uh, so if you can go to the to the file, yeah, to the exactly. So if we can go a little bit down, I think I read show this before. So those. Those are the high level metrics that I was thinking. And uh, this is, again, this is based on also Kubernetes doing for the air definition. Okay. So I'm not reinventing not anything, just inspired in their okay. work. So the burst, again, so the burst, it's this, uh, that's what I was saying, shock test, but it's spike anyway. 
can be both terms, but it's you generate like you try to create 1000 VMs and and then you define, you know, um, uh, at, at once. Okay, so for example, in this uh, test that they are, they, are, they are showing here is let's assume that you have like a 1000 nodes and then you create like, a, I don't know, the, the density of 30 VMs per node. And it means that you, you try to create 3000 VMs at once, okay? So I say the density is the configuration of the scenario, okay? And however, the test is the burst test. I don't know, does it make sense? I see. I see. And, uh, and then if you go down a little bit more, so the steady state, uh, also there, there's this kind of metrics that uh, I'm proposing for the steady state for our case. So I think it would be nice. I didn't finish this document. This, that's why I didn't share before, but since you already start to talk about that, I think this might be a good, good, a good, good time to talk about this. And uh, if you go a little bit down, there is also a figure about that. So this is the VM churn and it has some updates, but we can have only crates and leads. This will be the, the cycle. And, uh, and, then, and then we have this, so like, uh, you know, we have this, uh, we want, it should be configurable, okay? Um, a churn of 20, probably you're already doing that, but 20 VMs. And, and this depends a lot on the deletion time of the VMs and it, and uh, the creation time of BVM and the, how the system can behave with a constant load of creation, deletion, and update. So again, so those are, those figures are actually I spared from Kubernetes figures. So I just put the names here, you know, VMs, um, but it's part of the Kubernetes scalability analysis. Uh, I was thinking that we might have some similar, you know, trends here. Well, the churn should be the same. So the other one before that maybe it's different for us. So, but uh, this, what I, those two kind of tests, I think, yeah, you can, you can see this presentation. Do they have, very nice. do they have churn rates like in there, uh, in here? Oh, mm -hmm. okay. You have the, yeah. I see. What are their, uh, what is their analysis on churn rates? Like, uh, They have like for objects also namespace, you know. Oh yeah, what's the? This is I've been looking for this. What is the? Um, what is their number of objects per per namespace like limits? Where's their performance start to? They must know this because we've been hitting this internally. Yeah, this is a huge cluster, isn't it? So five thousand. So services per namespace. So number of namespaces. Number oh so five thousand. Oh okay here so they after five thousand service. This is just services after just five thousand services per namespace. Oh this is a, this is the exact theory that I've been but trying to prove. But, but the point they have here is on, with five thousand they can only have two namespace. Okay so they what they are saying this analysis that's analysis mm -hmm. very it's very nice. So it's, is, it's not linear, the relationship. So if you increase the number of namespace, you cannot have yeah. this 5,000 service, you know, it will be, so they, they don't show here exactly the, the numbers in it in this figure, but. Uh, okay, so the, so the way you read this is that, that you can, you need fewer namespaces if you want to have. More servers, service, sorry. Yeah. Services. So if you have okay, so this five, is, but this is not so this is not a services in a single namespace. I think so. Oh, it is. It's, so you, if yeah. you have if you have five thousand services in a single namespace. Oh, maybe it's not single. I don't know. Yeah, it's not clear that. I think maybe it's divided so, by the two namespace. So services across two namespaces. Number of services yeah. per namespace is what I'm reading. Five thousand yeah. two. So, but yeah, then we'll be not. Yeah, here we go. So oh, 10,000 services. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. 
and 5,000 per namespace. Okay, yep. after this size, the service linked environment gets too big for the namespace causing pod crashes. Okay. Yeah, so we, we, we've actually, I, I mean, we've, if we've seen this, like not with services, it's just actually it's with other, other objects, PVCs, particularly uh, secrets as well. Um, they might have also has noticeable some. issues. Yeah, let me see. I didn't think they did testing with PVCs. That's I know I didn't see them. They didn't do have much data on it. Right. No first number configurations. Was um yeah, PVC, I don't remember. I think I don't know. Namespaces. Oh, pods per namespace. Oh, okay. So pods, okay, 150,000. Okay, this is a pretty good number. So like let's see. So number of pods per namespace. 3,000 and 3,000 pods per namespace. And, and that's assuming one namespace. One, is that yeah. 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 Wow. But if you have 50, it drops to 15. So <laughs> it's wow. It's, it's a huge drop, isn't it? So I, I found this very interesting, this, this work. So, and then Wait, so I they was like, have they even have the, let me see this. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that maybe in the end of the year, maybe we can get some similar analysis for Kubert, you know. Yeah, we should. And you know what, I bet um, we- End of next year, I'm saying. Well, it did yeah, plan no, for I, next year, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I This is exactly where I want to go with this. And um, it would be interesting too, to talk even with this, the, the, the Kubernetes 6 scale as well, because I bet, you know, I think if we put compile our findings and, and reach out to them and present it to them, they would be, I'm sure, would be very interested yeah. to see this. I mean, from a VM perspective, that would be really interesting, I think. Uh -huh. or, or receive feedback from them. They are the Yeah, I mean, because like, yeah, because like, I think, yeah, exactly. Like, take our ideas. and Because I, I, we're sort of, we're, we're, we're very dependent on them. And we basically piggyback on a lot of what they're doing. Um, and so we want to reuse the patterns and everything. So, but but it's also interesting because we have our controllers as well. So you see here the OpenShift doc for the limit. Maybe it's the, no, not. Let's see. Yeah, I saw an OpenShift doc man for. You see, scaling performance uh, cluster limits. Number so, I, yeah, I saw this kind of document showing the limits. And number of nodes, number of pods, number of pods per node, number of pods per core, number of namespaces. Number of yeah, although this is old, because I saw that it's OpenShift 3. Now it's nine point. Yeah, this document. Okay, you the here. No, I didn't have it. Let's see where it go. Yeah, I saw some. They up, so maybe they, they. I think they. I saw like the OpenShift has a. There you go. They own. Oh, okay. Um, is there limits? What was that called again? It was called. It was limits, yeah. How um, many was cluster limits? So I didn't see a limit document here. Let's see, topology manager. So they don't have it anymore. But I I know that OpenShift has uh, a limits documentation in their uh. Anyway, so we are targeting Kubernetes just here, so we can just check Kubernetes limits. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. I wasn't aware of this. Uh, this 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 presentation, um, but this is really useful information. I mean, especially I did not realize that the number of pods, so number of pods per namespace can yeah, affect it's... the number of namespace like that you have. I thought that this could actually scale like quite a bit um, horizontally. Yeah. It was independent of this variable. That's and interesting. Again, 
it's not linear the relationship so it's very interesting yeah 1550 yeah so you can see this, 15. this curve oh my yeah, yeah i mean that's draw. significant so this is well so okay it's old though, also because just just be careful so it's for uh four years uh three years old something like that it's 2018 but i wouldn't expect to bet you know too much better than <laughs> what they had three years ago so that's really interesting who's the author of this oh, okay these are the i've seen these guys in some of the communities okay mm -hmm. um i'll have to i'll review this because um I wasn't aware of this. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So. Yeah. Again. So then all of that is, here. is to to say that maybe we should stick to the uh, burst and steady state uh, load generation, and mm -hmm. and then and th then we are doing the burst now. But of course, it's we should also do the steady state. Um, and, and then we need to vary the objects and see what we do. Also, just, just namespace analysis also, it's on the road, you know, idea that I was playing, you know, to test on different namespace. So the, the load generator, what I'm doing now, the next step. So I received some feedbacks before. It was a long time ago when I was working the load generator. Okay? and. Uh, it was from the the guys that created the cube burn. I don't know if you saw this this tool before. Yeah, I saw you. I think they commented on your PR. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, David pointed me this one, and then I was looking, and the cube burn is very interesting, and mm -hmm. they have they have a lot of things there. You know. Also, the the audit tool. It looks like also inspired from cube burn. Then what I'm thinking is. So, and uh, a lot of people, at least from people from Red Hat, I don't know if it's a lot of people, but people from Red Hat, many is, you know, performance engineer guys are using Kubern, especially for uh, testing Kubernetes. Um, but I think I want to maybe contribute for Kubern to create VMs. However, Kubern, it's, it's, uh, it's doing only the burn test, you know, so, uh, but maybe it also, you know, can benefit from this steady state test. And, you know, that, that's, that's what I was, I was playing, you know, to, to extend Kubern for just things that, those kind of tests. Okay. Well, hold on, before, I, I do want to talk more actually about our plan for load generator, but I want to finish okay. this one. So yeah. I want to make sure I get this right. So uh density in burst um oh wait wait, wait, wait. no uh, density burst um density so density so how are we how are we going to describe this so this is about density is about um creating density, i think density it's how we configure the scenarios so for okay, example so scenario okay so it, for example we want to have so because it's easier than to create tests you know saying 10 pods per node, mm -hmm. 20 pods per node, no, 10 VMs per node, 20 VMs per node. And, and then it defines how many VMs we create then later. So, you know, like uh, the Kubernetes is doing there in their analysis. So then we change the density for, for the test and change the density yeah, for the test. And then we have two different ways to generate the load. Burst is we create at once and then we don't care if we uh, we just wait it to be created and the steady state is the system will achieve a steady state so then we configuring the churn so also the churn term it's it's a term for um, yeah, so it's how we configure. So, for example, the density is how we configure the burst test, and the churn is how we configure the steady state test. Steady state test. I think I would define like that. Um, okay, in the chat. 
but this is, would they be okay so steady state would be um its own uh come back, come back. yeah maybe, can i maybe I can put here so yeah go ahead here yeah. i was gonna this is what so I was gonna try to we get. have uh first first oops oops first load generation and then oh burst test maybe better burst that and a steady state test so and then we have this uh scenario configuration using uh vm density and then the oh yeah the steady state we we have the scenario configuration using the the churn uh You know, so okay. for example, we have like a churn of 20 VMs or we configure, oh, probably we, we start with low things and it's five, you know, then we've, we test different scenario, 10. And this is the rate that we change? Yes. This? Okay. So VMs, and then we, that's it's how we configure the load generator. So the test, and here will be like uh, again. So then, yeah, VMs per node, and then twenty, and then thirty, and so on. You know, let's put per node later. Okay, and then you could also have. Um... So then, then the, the intensity of them that we were like saying hi in large number, you, you know, to create this uh, soak and spike. Uh, it's configured here. So it's the, uh, that I'm saying is the different scenario. So you have more density or lower density, but it's part of this umbrella test, the worst test, you know. And then the steady state, uh, again, so you, you put different pressure in the test or not, so. I don't know, so, yeah. do, you agree, do you like this definition? So it's 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 up for discussion, so. I, you I, know, I, I was thinking question. about that for a while, yeah. Uh -huh. Here's a question, the, um, so burst test, this would be, what well, would be my assumption, like when I start this test, is that um, that uh, like the burst test, all I'm going to do is um, um, like how how is it different than the steady state? So burst steady state will keep a um, a data center full at all time. That's the assumption, and then burst test is just that we're going to cause pressure by creating virtual machines one time is that the difference yes so and then they, they test different things so that's that's the definition so the the steady state it's keep the data center uh, you know as you as you mentioned um with a constant load and then it's to test what they call normal behavior so you don't push the data center too much so you can of course you can be close to the borders but the, the burst test is normally to test like a creation of a large number of objects and see how the system behaves. It's specifically uh, has many use cases for that. And one of them is oh, lost you, Marcelo. Hey, lost you there. Yeah, I'm seeing <laughs> Okay, <laughs> sorry. 
Um, yeah, so the the burst again. So I don't know if you if you if you got uh, the part that you I stopped to talk, but the, the, in the end, is the burst is basically uh, to test you know uh, a very suddenly you know sudden demand that arrives to the system and see if the system can cope with that. Also, if if there was some hazard, so you know some nodes broke, and then it come back, mm -hmm. and then it will be a lot of you know recreation of a lot of requests for recreation things, you know it is more related to the burst test, you know to recover to to suddenly create a lot of objects, and the steady state is to see how the system performs in a normal. Oh, well, I'm having internet problems, right? <laughs> I think, and um, and basically the the steady state is then is to test how the system behavior with flow. So, because we were expecting like a, in a regular system to have a lot of users creating and deleting um, objects to the systems. So again. Steady state is for normal behavior for the system, and burst is for corner case that we want to test. This is this is the 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 the, the you know official definition of that. Okay, so I would the 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 things that I'm also wondering about are like uh like uh let's see so in a steady state so in this churn scenario right like um. This is like we have a bunch of VMs being created and deleted. These can be at variable rates. Like, um, what would we call this? Like when, um, like when it's really quick. Like when we're doing very sudden decrease after we sort of have this um, the zone and or the data center in this like in this um, at capacity. I guess we'll call it. Yeah. Do you know what we call this? Like it would be like, because there's, this is configurable too, right? Like, I mean, we have these examples here. Um, I mean, so do we can, not call it I, anything? Can you repeat this? The yeah, question? I'm wondering, so maybe we just don't call it anything. So churn test means that we're going to, churn just means we're going to do, create, we're going to delete and then create. That's like, that's all it means. Um, mm -hmm. If we have steady state, it means that uh, it's we want slow to... ramp up, right? That's what we're saying, slow ramp up? No, it says like, can be slower or fast, the ramp up. However, it it's, yeah, it okay. doesn't matter. So, but it can achieve a steady state and the steady state will be just churn. So if we configure, configure a churn of five, it should, you know, after the ramp up, you know, it should reach a state where we have a constant five VM creation and deletion per minute. I don't know, something like that, you know? And then it's less for that, you know, for, I don't know, for one hour, I don't know the, the time window, but it should last for that. So that's, we achieve the steady state for this churn. So, so would if, you say, one thing I wanna ask is that a steady state test is that we expect a data center to stay at a certain virtual machine count. Is that, well, is that what we're testing? Like we want to test for it to remain at some in some in the same state. Some some a constant churn. So, for example, and this is a scenario, right? Like this, this is a pressure we put at it, but we expect in the steady state test will pass when um, will pass when it stays at a certain number of VMs, and the test we do is churn. Exactly. So, okay. and then the number of objects is another variable for the test. It's, it's can vary. So we can keep like a maximum of five VMs, uh, you know, in the whole system, or it can have more one 10,000 VMs, but it's, it can have a churn of five VMs, you know, 
because it affects the number of objects in the system, it affects etcd, it affects API calls and a lot of things. So there, there are many variables to, to the test. I, I've, I've, I have done that before for Kubernetes, you know, but I can actually um, take again all these variables that we should take in account for a steady state test. And, and then we can check that. Something like that. There we go. So like now we've got our steady state test. This mm -hmm. is what we expect. And then our different configuration scenarios is that we'll do churn. So what other what other scenarios are there for steady state? Uh, is it just churn? Like what's what else could we do? Create and delete. I guess we could be just you know in the or is it or, or would churn actually just be delete and then the steady state test just recreates? The churn, so but it can update also, update patch and do other kind of operation. Okay. But it wouldn't, but the is the expectation that no matter what scenario you're running, um, whatever it is, like it, this, that the steady state test is always going to, is going to sort of, it has to, it's going to recreate. So it, it would be, it has to be update, patch, and delete, boom, at a specific rate. So that causes chaos. Uh, remain a certain VMI count. So we're yeah, all... and, and creation also. So. Yeah, but the, but this will create though the turn. So the the turn scenario wouldn't create any VMs, right? This the steady state test is responsible for this because that's what our goal is, right? Yeah. You see what I mean? Like I because the uh, the reason I'm making this distinction is because this I think will affect our implementation. Like if we're doing okay, so right, so the turn it's how the the VM leave isn't it so maybe yeah maybe we can improve the, the definitions here so the, the update and patch will not remove the vms in it so maybe the, the churn is it's only when it's deleted isn't it? however we need to have a cycle well, we could well this would be a like so because like fine. if like patch is fine like we're we're causing chaos with these yeah like when we have the only thing that doesn't cause chaos is create create well it could but it, it's just that this this is um it's just who is doing the creating. This this mm -hmm. would be the steady state test is responsible for the creating is sort of what I'm thinking. And then this is our chaos. So so like others, any other scenario here, and this is at a rate. So are the difference between scenarios is that maybe we have other ones that don't do it at a specific rate. They just kind of, I don't know. Like that, that's what I'm seeing is the difference. We just, any sort of API operation on our Qbert objects are done repeatedly and then the zone just heals the steady state will just automatically bring us to we got to handle it and, and fix it whatever we, or it just won't fall apart it's like you know it'll just remain in some expected state yeah so i think what co confused me a little bit because the kubernetes they define it, the pod churn as okay. create update and delete per second <laughs> okay you know all the three operations so maybe maybe the churn is yeah. not the best name for that. Um, no, no, maybe you're right. I mean, I like as you're right that it's it is create. Um, yeah, I, I'm being being picky because like I, I mean, we can have it here. I, I it's not a problem. I just it's mostly like um, yeah. I mean, that's what we'll measure. I guess we'll call it. So so our scenario will be that. So yeah, yeah. the steady state. It's Maybe not the, the point. Of, what's important here? The steady state is not is not the number of VM count, but it the number the number of operations per second. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so that's what we, we're so. But we, we so we're for so example that, we want we want to have like a twenty VMs creation per second, and okay. to have for example in this scenario, and to have twenty VMs creation per second. And we have already the maximum no, uh, VM number, uh, VM, maximum VM configured that we can have in the cluster. We need to delete 20. So then it's where we have the ramp up. For example, we want the maximum number of VM is 1000. Okay. And then we keep creating until we reach the 1000. This is the ramp up. So, and then when we reach the, the limit of 1000 VMs, we need now to start to delete to create new VMs. And then that's we start to cycle. So 
we delete and create, there is a rate to delete. Delete deletion takes more time. So we cannot create the same rate. So the, and then the things will be like a, achieve a steady state, you know, behavior where we can keep this amount of VMs created in the, the system and keep deleting and recreating uh, VMs for like new requests. And then we can have the ramp down, which means when we finish and then we start to delete things and the system should, after the ramp down, it should come back to the normal behavior, isn't it? So all the garbage collector should be active and everything that should be made the system back. So we need to, the, all the phases are important. The ramp up, the, which can be a little bit similar what a burst test is doing, isn't it? And then mm -hmm. the middle, which the steady state, and then okay. the ramp down. Yeah, let me, okay, so let me do, I'm gonna just add phases here. Okay, so this will be you know, ramp up. Um, I mean, I just have change. I don't know how to define this broadly. I'm just change objects in a, uh, in a, in a it's, it's exactly the steady state phase. So, yeah. Repetitively, yeah, it's not There we go. Um, change items repeatedly and then ramp out, ramp down the, okay. Something like that. And then the different ways that we can do it are like going to be in our scenarios. I think the middle phase, well, okay, no, actually the first middle. Yeah. So it can be middle first, phase. Yeah. I don't remember. Ramp now. up could be ramp up could be anything that could be any of like first set. Would that that's fine. Okay. And then mm -hmm. change repeatedly. That could be our scenarios here and then ramp down. Um, yeah. I mean, just the inverse of whatever this is. Okay. Yeah. The ramp up, ramp can, up be, is, can be like a burst or can be a stair. You know, you create like a 20, 20, 20 until you reach the, you know, until you reach the maximum amount, you know, of VMs that you want. After that, you start to delete and, re okay. and create things. Let me, okay, so we have got our goal to, let me do our goal and then move up here. So our goal and, is to, we want to, um, what do we want to measure? Like, what's the thing we measure? So we like measure the, um the rate is it like is it, is it performance what like we want to measure the rate and the number of objects as well like can we keep up yeah so if or... you can go maybe if you can go to the there it's where the the matrix that i was describing before so if you can go to the yeah so if it, to these two yeah uh, yeah i think this is our yeah the api call latency and the VM creation latency. Okay, so measure, so measure. Um, it can be other things, but I think these are the most important. Yeah, these are a good one. Yeah, these are, let's start with these. Um, call latency. And then it was the creation latency. Okay. Measure VMI creation latency. Uh, let me do Qvert. Oh, no, we can't do that. It has to be a VMI. I guess it VM2. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, that's our goal. And then, um, so it doesn't matter if our, our, if our um, data center stays at a certain count. We don't care because we just want to see this. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It'll, it's not the data we want. Okay. Um, okay. So we've got our phases and then our different scenarios. So do we have any um, any more scenarios other than turn? I think is that our only, I, mean, I guess we don't need a them all now. So but... this, I think the scenarios here will be like, uh, you know, things like that. You know, you have create and then delete, and then you have create, update, delete. And maybe, you know, you vary that. So, and then you have like a maybe update, create an update. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. So, uh, patch. 
so is it always um in it's not always need to be create and deletion so okay but is it rise, okay i, I, reach, I yeah. see so but we just call this churn is it like is there anything other than churn or is that just... i think there is another name but kubernetes called churn but i, I can okay. uh, no i don't remember now which which are the names for that that's fit, here i'll you know. do i'll do this so we do we just do here we'll do our different scenarios underneath the what you okay, have yes. so like like this we can double check the terminology, the better, the exactly terminology for that. So those are, you know, um, well-defined, uh, you know, things okay. for the steady state test. So um, since Kubernetes used churn, I was using churn, but I'm uh, not sure. There, maybe there is another, I think there is another, um, I can okay. double check that. I don't remember now. All right, I like your definition here. So this is good. And then that makes sense. We have some things we're gonna measure um okay that makes a lot of sense to me okay so density burst uh so then we've got stress soak spike we need any other stuff do we have like is there what about this test like we didn't should we do the same thing here like what's the uh what's like the goal for this one yeah i it's just uh evaluate so we also have this yeah evaluate and then And then what we measure, it's the, it's a little bit different, different. So yeah, let me take also another part that is important. I'm doing some maintenance. Oh, actually, it's the opposite here. So, sorry. We'll just confuse here a little bit. Oh, one second. So just put it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So, we're normally during, okay, normal. Well, we, we may need to find normal operations because that can vary for many, like, yeah, different people right so that's that's why normal it means the matrix so if the matrix that we are checking it's under you know it's under the no the the expected ex, the expected latency for example for the vm creation for, we want for example to create 1000 vm and creating 1000 vm should take like uh, I don't know, twenty minutes, and if we keep that, you know, create one thousand VMs, it's twenty minutes. We are under normal operation. Oh, sorry, I'm confusing the no the <laughs> the, the test. <tests>. I mean, <laughs> it's okay. So the the normal uh, operation is here. Okay, I was talking about the, the burst test now. I'm sorry. Okay, for the for the normal operation, I think we should say that is this everything is working as expected in the system. So we don't have node that it's not responding. We have uh uh the, the API call latency is uh under what we expect to be the vm creation latency is under what we expect to be and the system will be like in the normal operation okay i still so um i want to be a little bit more specific though so the yeah, evaluate yeah. the system like 
write the system to function. Um, when we say like SLOs or like with like that's like within our um, um, so evaluate the system during um, Um, okay, so people don't always do churn like it's not no like, because, because what if you you could so there's another test here which is so mm -hmm. here's here's like another one um not sure so it's like the opposite is that we don't do anything um like we uh do we have a name for this like yes i call it i call it soak down here so like this is like um we we let the VMs um, um, okay, so you create a, something like that. We do nothing. Then it's it's in the burst, isn't it? So you create like a one thousand VMs, and then you just wait to see. Well, well, you see, my reason that I'm sort of. So, cause like we expect it to function normally while we're under normal operations, this would be under normal operations. I just run my, I'd run my application and just, I just expect it to just continue running, you know? Yeah, so okay. the, the burst test, you, you, you don't want, you don't expect the system to break also. So <laughs> you, of course, yeah, I understand that we are saying under have load, um but maybe we can you know um you know flexible you know make it a little bit more flexible the definition of burst because i think just because the steady state should it should have this thing cycling you know create and deleting if you create and then you do you do nothing i think it will be a, under the burst test because there are other kind of tests. There is this. There are another thing that they call stair test, which means you you create in batch. We can call also. Maybe maybe instead of call burst, we can call batch. And it will be like that. So the system's ability to function um, during what. Uh... Uh, within expected. Um, hmm. No, I'm saying I think the soak should be inside the burst, not in the steady state. Because it's basically like a long burst test, is what you're saying. Yes. It's mm -hmm. just you create and you don't delete, you just wait. So then this has to be turned is what you're saying. This this is like we we yeah. have to we have to cause chaos. Yes. Okay, that's that's fine. Okay. I, I think we just gotta find our definition that makes sense. Like so like mm -hmm. we, for this, because the about the system ability to function um um while objects are being um I mean it that's where while objects are being created and deleted. I mean, or while there's change, while there's um churn while well, there's um, something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, so the point is, So evaluate the system ability to function. I'd say, nor, I don't know, you didn't like this normally, but function in normal. Under stress or like, functional, stress can be anything. Yeah. I function, mean. let's function on something. 
under constant load, okay? Functional. Uh, but still, constant load can mean so many things. Like, it's it's it has to do with churn. Like, churn is like the only thing that defines the steady state test. But it's like, a constant. It? It's a constant load. It, you have like a, uh, you know, some. Then, churn. But, Some churn. but so could be constant load though, because it's it's a we fill the zone. That's load. No, but you stop, isn't it? So or do you keep continuing? So you waiting? define so you're defining load as uh, the number of sort of verbs like create, delete is yeah. as well. per second. Okay. Yeah. So okay, we want to use that definition. Like uh, while the um while there's action, while there's um, something being taken place, something objects being acted on, while there, while there's change during chaos or something. Yeah, but if you stop to to, to re do requests, you don't have any. You are not introducing any loads to the system anymore. I understand that you have workloads running there, but it's not the load in the control plane perspective, isn't it? So if you keep doing create, deletion, update, patch, mm -hmm. that you are introducing load to the system. So that's that's here is the constant load. Okay, well, so we can define it. So uh, then under con while control plane, so that's that's what I want to get really specific about. So then uh -huh. evaluate the system, because because load, right? I mean, we could say compute load, like we're not, that's what I want to get, that's what I want to clear up. So like while the while the control plane is under constant, under pressure, under constant pressure, um, properly, um, while- but it's, We are generating the load. Well, I mean, you could say load. I mean, it's it, under constant load. I mean, that's, that's it's the same thing. I'm just using different trends of different words. By the system's ability to function properly while the control plane is under constant load. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, same, same thing or pressure, same, same thing, synonyms. Yeah. I mean, that this, this, in order for this to be true, we have to be doing, we have to be doing churn. We have to be having API, we have to be sending requests to the API server. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think that, is different now that to me moves soak up here that makes sense because we're not constantly doing it we're, we're waiting this is just one test one scenario soak and then there's others maybe like we measure performance or i don't know we just create deletes or something i don't know what that would be called yeah i don't know yeah but we can leave so, it now okay and then we can even change a little bit here you know i'm going to remove these so like here, so here are the other ones. So we have like steady state spike, fast ramp, ramp up. Yeah, like this is like, here's a, like here's, yeah, this would be another one, like spike test. So fast ramp up. That could be another scenario. Um, or fast ramp down. I think that's right. Because it's just, we're not measuring constant load. Yeah, but uh, yes. I think that's just exactly what burst is. So, what we call spike and burst. Well, I, I mean, but, the same. okay. I mean, I can call it, but yeah. I mean, well, I, we're calling this category burst test. I mean, I should, think we call, should we call should call something else and then batch test? Okay, then yeah, maybe this batch. is burst. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, then spike so stress. But then the batch now it's not like. Uh, Under have load, so evaluate the system. So we've got soak, we've got spike. Slowly I ramp up, I call it I stress. I will remove this under have load, okay? Because the the soak cannot, maybe cannot be under have load. We can create like a small number of VMs and see, is it? I don't know. I don't know if it makes sense also to test. I think it should be fine. It should be fine like that. 
So what's this stress? I don't know. I'm I'm trying to consider. So this is different speeds. I don't know if this makes any sense. It probably doesn't. I'm just kind of making up a name, but slow. These are different speeds, right? Because this is the, the configurable nature of the batch test is we can do it fast or slow. Um, but this is the, depends on the density, isn't it? Oh, you mean the fast and slow is the request? Oh, actually, I didn't see this here. We don't, I, here, I want to, yeah, I want to, so, so we don't call this, so we wouldn't call this density at all anymore. We would, so we call it batch and we say, um, so what are we going to measure? So do we have a, uh, if we have phases? No, I'll keep that. Okay. So the scenarios is we do it fast. Yeah. The phase, I think that's, that's the, that's the point. Okay. So the phase is rump, rump up. Fast, I think that's the point. Oh, so sorry. Have, I <laughs> no, don't worry. So we have this, uh, the rump, you know, up phase and then the rum down and then we don't have the middle phase like the steady state i think that's good and uh okay and the scenarios here is we can configure you know um the creation rate isn't it Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think we call this burst. Great yeah, rate. We do like fast, slow. VM and then VMI or VM, VMI or I don't know. If you do uh, object creation rate, I mean, that might just be more like that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Better. There you go. Yeah. Something like that. And then, um, and then soak just is something else. So soak is like, um, it just means that, okay, so, uh, so, so what would be our middle phase then? Like if with soak, um, what would we say here? Because we're just waiting, like, I don't know. We just call like wait time, something in here, measure, because the wait time can be configurable to, to, to nothing. And then I would say time. idle. Idle time. Okay. Yeah. Then there's maybe our difference. So we have idle or idle. Here we're doing churn down here or steady state is what we call it. We're doing steady state. Yeah. What are we called? Where's our phase? Ah, uh, change objects repeatedly. Is it, we don't actually have a name for it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So we do idle here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. To me, that's here. Ramp up. Object. We'll do the exact same thing. Down object count. Idle. Change objects repeatedly. Okay. <clears throat> that makes sense. Change the rate, and then we don't need this. And then we leave soak. And that just affects the idle time. Okay. Yeah. So if we have like a. And then lastly is probably object count, maybe for this. And that's that's the last the last piece. Um, this VM density. Do we call that VM density? Yeah. So it will be. Oh, yeah, exactly. I will something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> Idle time zero. That oh, doesn't matter. I don't need okay. It can can vary. So it's it, it, yeah, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, that can that can vary. This is just we expect and soak it's just long. Okay. And then density high low. Okay. And, then, and I think what we could do is you just mix them together. Like you could do a soak test with high VM density and fast creation rate. Like you can do all of them, all the scenarios together, or one of them. Mm -hmm. And okay. Makes sense. Okay, let me get rid of this. I think we covered all of that. Those are all of the ones that we had. Okay, cool. So we call batch test and steady state test. Mm -hmm. So generate. Okay, we should continue this discussion next time because um, we should talk more about this. And because I do want to do some design on this because 
<clears throat> I was looking at doing the churn and I've, I've just basically did a POC. I, I took your code and I changed it around and kind of made a POC out of it. I've been doing some testing, um, but I want to make it like, cause this is like, to me, these are, there's a lot of like, when I think about the implementation here, there's a lot of shared parts here and I kind of want to map them out um, so that we can kind of get on the same page in terms of, you know, how we can take this load generator and account for all these scenarios. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, Marcelo, I think I lost track of time here. Oh, we're already 15 minutes over. Okay, um, uh, I wonder, so I'll follow up on this um, with you guys in Slack and yeah, we'll, so our next meeting isn't gonna be till the new year. So I think it's gonna be January, January, uh, the first week of January, January 5th or 6th or something. Let's see, January 6th. So that'll be your next call. So, all right, we'll have a, have a good year, have a good uh, New Year's and have a good holiday. Thanks for so we'll, Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll let you know on Slack while this goes and uh, keep thinking about this because I, I kind of, we're gonna, I think we should have, we'll do some more design on this, for some maybe design doc or something. Mm -hmm. But you already have it. I think we should take this and yeah, we should kind of expand and collaborate. I'll put my thoughts maybe in here and that's maybe what we can do. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I, I was also sent you a, a pointer to a, Yeah, so a pointer to a, a implementation of this, um, you know, steady state uh, load generation that a okay. friend from IBM did. I think they call, actually, he calls it a closed loop also. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like the terminology, to be honest, like it, whatever. I, I don't really care what we call it. I think the definition is the most important thing that we agree on. And that's like going to drive everything. So I think we, now we have something on paper here. We can, um, I think it would be really valuable, like, to like, let's get David's opinion. Let's get others' opinions. Yeah. Maybe we should even like, this will be on the mailing list when I post the notes, but it would actually be even good to expand um, or just post this like, hey, like this is, you know, on the mailing list just to say, hey, is what we define this. So, so people are aware. So I think that's kind of where we want to go with this. And then maybe we can work on design after that if maybe we get some agreement on the language. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, Marcelo, thanks. Okay, thank you. Talk to you later.